Hey folks, welcome to a new week. Hope everything's going well with you. Hope you're having a good time. As we're heading into the stronger winter months, it is getting really, really cold where I am. But hopefully it's okay where you are. Especially those of you who are lucky enough to live in countries with lovely climates. If you like what I do, please continue subscribing to the channel and helping me towards my 20,000 subscriber uh, goal. It's going to be amazing once we finally get there. I mean, every single time I hit one of these goals, I want to continue pushing to the next one. My absolute dream is to get to around 30. Around 30 is where I, I think I'll be in my happy place, you know? We're not hitting terminal velocity, but we are in a very nice place. So, if you can help me get to my next goal, if you're new around here, then please do so. It'll mean the world to me, and it doesn't cost you anything. So there you go. If you aren't going to get any more models towards the festive period, make sure you use the promo code Northern Exile down below uh, or over at Composite Games to get yourself 5% off your order at checkout. All of the times you do that, you do help out the channel uh, because they, they put something in a, little, in a little account for me that I can use to get models for the Void Talons or for prizes for our prize draws. We haven't had one in a little while, mainly because we're gearing up for the painting competitions that are on their way in December and into next year. So I'm saving up. I'm saving up my uh, my reward money over there to make sure that I can get some awards for our stuff next year. So there we go. Right, Hobby Nightmares. Let's jump in, shall we? If you do have any Hobby Nightmares, make sure you send them to the, the email down below. I can't promise they'll be read within the next few days or the next week, but they will be read. I'm getting through them now and I'm putting them all into their own little uh, spheres of influence sort of a thing. So you have, you know, relationship hobby nightmares are in one part, in one file, then you have all of the, the games workshop hobby nightmares in another one, right? Today is more of a games workshop day, but I do have one here that's not related to games workshop. Oh, well it is, but, but, but I'll read it, shall I? Alpharius says, Hey North, Alpharius here. Hope all is going well with you. Yeah, it's very good. I've got a little fun hobby nightmare to share. To start off with the hobby and wargaming scene in my town are pretty small. As there's only one local store near me. Just before we go anywhere, if you do live in a big city or you live in an area where you have quite a good uh, hobby, hobby group or multiple hobby groups, you are very, very, very lucky. And I'm not sure people realise how lucky they are a lot of the time when they're in these sorts of situations. But anyway. The store is pretty welcoming and the managers are pretty chill. For some context, because everybody loves a little lore, this shop has a local Discord server in which everybody who visits the store can join. It's pretty useful for finding games, chatting about the games or just general hobbying. This is, this is where the hobby nightmare starts. I'm relatively new to both this store and Discord server, so I don't know too many people. So when I asked to play a 1000 point game with people the upcoming weekend, I took the first offer that I got. Let's call this individual Buttermilk Bob. Okay, yeah, accepting the, new, the first new offer that you get, this is where all these hobby nightmares start. But you kind of got to, you know, you can't not. You just gotta jump in there and do it. Now. Bob is the embodiment of a Games Workshop shill. Whereas they can do no wrong and every release they do is perfect in his eyes. Bob is also a mega ultramarine fanboy. Now, a last little bit of context. I also collect ultramarines, necrons, admech, and finally, of course, alpha legion. So, I thought we'd get along great. So I get to the shop that we can before Bob does and I talk to the manager a little and get our table secured for the game. I started to unpack my, my 1000 points of ultramarines onto one side of the tables next to the main gaming table. When I heard it. Think of that scene in Jurassic Park where the T-Rex is shaking the water cup inside the jeep with every step. I thought to myself it must be a category 10 earthquake. When everything started going dark like a solar eclipse. I look out the window, expecting to see the herald of the apocalypse, and what I see, I can only hope is a man, given this man looks like a big weld walking into the store. A big weld? Okay. 
I tried to remain nice and respectful and reach out my hand to shake, asking, Hi, you must be Bob. His hand felt like a wet raw chicken breast somehow, cold and warm at the same time. Uh, yes, he says, you are now in the presence of the Lord Commander of Ultramar, he said to me. At this point, I realised the mistake I had made in agreeing to this game. This happens all the time. This is like one of the like, base hobby nightmares that happens. When somebody says, at this point, I realised I chose the wrong person to game with. I try and discreetly wipe my hands off on my jeans, saying, uh, right. So you re you're ready to try and get this game on the, on the way then? And he responds with, only if you are prepared to face defeat. We walk over to the table and he sees my Chaos Space Marine Codex and Index cards on the table, yet my Ultramarine set up on the other side. He looks at me with a spiteful gaze saying, I think you brought the wrong books. I laugh and say, oh, you misunderstand. These aren't Ultramarines, but Alpha Legion. You'd think I just showed him a video of, of me banging his mum. <laughs> ah, that's so funny. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's a really good thing, though. I, I, I know I know at least one other... Well, I know not at least. I know one other person who had this idea for an Ultramarine army. Uh, but there are certain parts of the Ultramarine army that just, that just look off. Do you know what I mean? And like, what? What's going on there? And it turns out they're all Alpha Legion. Like, you play as Chaos. You know? And, and there, there's all sorts in there. He's got, like, actual Chaos... Uh, uh, his army's like the moment where the, the veil's taken off, do you know what I mean? So he's got ultramarines there. And they're all painted in the old pastel colours. Like really bright blues and, and yellow instead of gold on the trim and things like that. Um, because he wants them to look like, you know, people are trying to look like ultramarines rather than actually looking like ultramarines. And they do look like ultramarines, you know, at a glance, you're like, oh, those are ultramarines. Then you look a bit closer, you go, hang on a minute, that, you know, they look a bit jagged. They look a bit angry. And then, oh, and then you see like you know, the the the, the war crabs and all the, the what what's it what's it called, the spirit grinders? I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, yeah, things like that and hell drakes and stuff. You're like, oh right, there's a chaos. <laughs> Good idea for an army. My ultramarines are all secretly alpha legion, so I play both chaos and loyalist games. I've got 3D printed alpha legion bits on all of my marines. He picks up one of my new Infernus Marines and says, These are all wrong. The pathetic Alpha Legion could never infiltrate the Ultramarines. I told him if you read any of the books involving them, you'd know they could infiltrate any Legion that they wanted. In the newest Arcs of Omen book, they impersonated Dark Angels. And if they can infiltrate them, they can infiltrate anyone. That's true. That's true. He looked rather displeased with anything I had to say, and I could tell... He was no longer listening, so I finally asked, so, are we going to play? And he said he forgot he had a birthday party to attend to, and he waddled out of the store. Well, I was left there to pick up my models and head back home after picking up some paint and explaining what happened to the manager. He told me this wasn't the first time he'd acted like a man-child in the store, and it's actually when someone beats him in a game, usually. I knew from then on never to try and play against Jabba the Hutt's brother again. I only had one other negative interaction with him, and that was in the Discord mini painting channel. I posted my brand new Abaddon model, painted in the Alpha Legion colours of course, saying his name was Alpharius the Despoiler, as a bit of a laugh. In my own little fun headcanon on the universe, the real Abaddon died due to his fight with Sigismund, and the Alpha Legion quietly took over the Black Legion to keep up playing both sides. Anyway. Bob thought the entire idea was stupid and that I had wasted a perfectly good model. I told him he didn't, uh, he didn't spend the six hours painting him and that he could kindly F off. He hasn't interacted with me since. I hope you enjoyed these two hobby nightmares. Below are some pictures of the two models mentioned in the story. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day slash night. Right, but we can't be teased with models and not put them on. So, let's do that, shall we? Um, I pre-selected these, so they should be right there, right ready to go. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Here is the Abaddon in question. Oh, he looks pretty cool. I like that. That looks cool, man. That looks cool. 
I like that. I love that, dude. I've just noticed. I've just noticed the cloaks coming off them. Dude, I love that. That's incredible. That's so cool. <laughs> That's crazy. It's even happening on his like his robes and stuff. That's crazy, man. That's so cool. That's brilliant. I really hope you do it for the ultramarines as well. Oh, you are in the background there. You can I can see them. I can see them. Oh my god, is there another one here? That's amazing. I'm really sorry if you're driving or if you're like, you know, doing other things. You're like, oh my god, I just wanna, I just wanna look at this thing. Um, is this another one? Yeah, this is the back of them. Okay, cool. The back of those models. Dude, that's brilliant. Oh my days. That's such a good idea. That's a great idea. It just, it's just so nice, man. It, it's brilliant. Well done. Well, well done. I love models that tell a story. There's, there's literally nothing, you know, that gets me, gets me going more. Oh, that sounds wrong. But yeah, there's nothing that gets me in the heart more than, um, you know, actually seeing models like this, like done properly. That's cool, man. That's cool. Show me, if you can, an Ultramarine changing into an Alpha Legionnaire. That would be amazing. I'm going to leave that up for a while. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Lovely stuff. Uh, well, a well-painted uh, Ultramarine as well, by the way. So, you know. Moving on. I'll leave that up there for a little bit. Right. Jumping in. Jumping onwards. Uh, Lost Deckard says Hey North I just thought I would send something in normally instead of waiting for the weekly venting sessions of Games Workshop managers This is about when I left the company so it's a bit more focused than the other videos that you're doing on the subject I've been waiting to get this off my chest for a while So I will not be going into specifics of names or places as whilst this happened a little while ago it di I did some digging and almost all the people in this story are still working for the company. Okay, cool. Um, so this is somebody who is in the in the uh, manager's venting group on Discord and on the WhatsApp. So thank you for being a part of that. And he doesn't want to wait. He wants to jump in there. And we'll go over this. I think what we're going to do, maybe not this week, but the following week, is one of the rants will be on um, how you left Games Workshop. That's going to be interesting. We got part two tomorrow of the worst things that have happened in your store. Because because of the success of the first video, we've now got like ten times the stories coming in on WhatsApp. You know, and in, in private messenger on Discord. And we've even had a few on the actual Discord itself. So, I have a lot to go through this evening to, you know, to parcel out what, what's going to make it into the video tomorrow. But should be a really fun one. And a longer one as well, because uh, yeah, we got a lot of things to get through. We may be doing about five parts of that. Now I've I've seen all of the all of the story, or well, most of the stories, and they're all really good. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I had always wanted to work for Games Workshop. The guys in my local store when I was a kid were my heroes. They'd do a lot for me, and would always and would always be smiling and ready to have fun in the store. It may sound sad, but even in high school, when asked what kind of a job I wanted, I would always bring those guys up and say, yeah, something like that. Little did I know that I'd actually get to do just that. So, fresh out of high school and thinking about heading to college, I applied to be a key timer, essentially a relief worker, and was quickly absorbed into the local games workshop in my new college town. The manager, Dave, was a really nice guy and guided me along the process of managing the store when he was not there. How to do banking and how to lead customers through a conversation. Not so we could sell them stuff, but so we could sell them the stuff they actually wanted, which I liked. 
cool. For those of you who don't know, by the way, a relief staff worker, as I've said before, but you know, there's always new people, a relief staff worker is somebody who works at Games Workshop when the manager can't. So if the manager is you know, off ill, or if he goes on holiday, or whatever, right? Cool. And usually, they work in one-man stores. So if the store just has the manager in it and that's it, that's where they work. Eventually, we became friends, and I started to notice that he was looking a little, a little drawn and haggard most of the time, which sucked. I asked him what was up, and eventually he opened up about the stresses of working for Games Workshop. He told me about the unreasonable targets that he'd been set for his store, a store that was tanking before he got there. Now, Games Workshop expected vast growth month on month, or his job would be up for review. Like, this store was literally losing money before Dave got there. Then he makes it profitable, not amazing, but in, in the green enough to pay for his wages and to cover the rent of the store space. And they then demanded he make 5% growth every month until the end of the financial year. That was the number given to the guy by his trainer. They said it was a target to hit, vague. But really, it was a demand, let's be real here. Yeah, and a ridiculous one at that. There are massive companies out there that don't make 5% growth every single month. Let alone your dinky little model store, right? It's not going to make 5% growth every single month. Unless you're, unless you're giving away models with the models you're already selling, that ain't happening, you know? And even then, it won't be 5%. It'll be like 20% and then back down to 1%. Do you know what I mean? It'll be have a big surge and then it'll go back down again. It's, it's just ridiculous what they expect from you. I mean, how is this one guy in one store supposed to, like, push a store to the point where it's getting 5% growth every single month? How? Tell me how. I worked in a store that had three people in it. Three staff members constantly churning out sales. And we had, like, 1% growth month on month. Not 5 That's ridiculous, dude. Either you've got your number wrong there, or, like, th they are literally out for the blood with this guy. That's ridiculous. Soon the time came for me to finish up my studies, and Dave was done with Games Workshop. He had taken a job offer somewhere else in the city, and was leaving for good. I don't know what possessed me after all the warnings. Maybe I thought I could do better. Maybe I thought Dave's situation was more of a one-off, and he'd just been saddled with the wrong people. Whatever the case was, I applied for the position and got it. Almost too easily, now that I think back on it. I was whisked away to HQ and given a small tour after doing my interview there. I was thinking that this was it, and was treated like I was some sort of secret pet project that Games Workshop wanted to unleash on the store, which felt pretty great. When I got to the store, we did an induction day or two, which was general training and really cringy role-playing exercises. These aside, my first few weeks and months at Games Workshop were pretty amazing. I handled the store and no targets were set. We continued to grow and I started to put plans in place for summer campaigns and tournaments in the store. That's cool. I will say, uh, the role-playing, I could, yeah, that happened to me too. So it's so my first day or two as a manager, I did lots of role-playing scenarios with my trainer that were awkward as fuck. Like, really, really, really awkward. Um, I will say this. The guy thought he could act. And um, <laughs> it was just like the most over-the-top. It was so hard to keep a straight face. It was just over-the-top and like, you know, Hi, I'm a customer. Like, you know, I was like, oh my bloody days. Can, can you not? Um, anyway. My first summer pretty much went without a hitch. We sold a lot of stock, and in fact, sold so much that we had a big spike in numbers sales-wise. We did a campaign in the store where players were encouraged to make their armies different by buying different model kits in the store and combining them to make a unit in our campaign that was totally unique and their own. We even sat down and went over rules for the units that they made, creating real-looking profiles for their units as if they had come from a codex. I first got into this channel, as in you, 
by hearing that you did a very similar idea in your store and that really resonated with me and made me feel that we had quite similar experiences. So, so thanks for that, no problem man. And yeah, I did, I did a similar thing in my store, yeah. Very, very similar. Uh, moving on, anyway. I think in, in my store we had... Um, there was an Imperial Fist player who had a unit of Breacher Shields who when they linked them together and were in a line, they could form a shield wall. They gave them some they gave them like a, a two plus and vulnerable save or something. These like normal marines, you know what I mean? But like 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 the actual shield wall gave them a ridiculous save. So like the Imperial side in our games and our big campaigns would use him to like lock down uh really important objectives and he would like stand there and, and capture the point. It was really, really cool. But then there were really killy alien units and, you know, chaos units that could rip apart that unit if it got there. That kind of thing. It was really, really cool. Anyway, moving on. Um, we had, for instance, the Ethereal Council, which was, a, which was a group of Tau Ethereals that gave any Tau units within 12 inches of them pretty insane buffs. More shots, higher toughness, that kind of thing. They were the kind, they were like kind of a end boss of facing the Tau that you had to deal with when facing this guy. That's pretty cool. I like that. Combining that with Riptides would be amazing. Can you imagine? Anyway. We also, from what I remember, had the Dread Knight Synapse Glaive. Essentially, a single Grey Knight Librarian in Terminator armor remotely piloting three Dread Knights with his psychic powers that were converted to be riderless and badass. They were kind of like a mix between the new Dreadnoughts and Dread Knights. That was pretty awesome, as this was a tank of a unit, obviously, but could only move as fast as the, li as the Librarian beside shunting, and they had to shunt as a complete unit. This meant that it was unwieldy and easy to bog down in a tar pit, but when it got into where it hurts, it absolutely wrecked. I remember this unit getting into the Ethereals from earlier and mincing them to mulch in a second. As you can imagine, each time a player committed to an idea like this, they had to buy all of the models in the store, which meant a massive upturn in sales as we had about 30 people in the campaign fighting over the world we had made. That's pretty awesome, dude. That is pretty awesome. Um, th I, 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 the one problem I had when I did this similar idea is that I had, I had customers saying, well, I should be allowed to play even if I bought my models from a third-party site, or even if I bought my models from elsewhere, to the point where I said no, I had to say no, I'm providing the space, I've set the rules and the parameters quite easily, and quite in the open for, for you to do. If you don't like the rules, you, what you're getting out of this is a, is a massive campaign that is really, really, really supported by the store and by me, and you're getting to use very specific models and rules in my store, okay? Cool. I'm taking the risk of head office finding out about that and disciplining me. So the least you can do is buy the models you're going to use for the campaign in the store. Right? You scratch my back, I scratch yours. That's how I that's how I did it. Literally. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. If you don't want to be involved, you don't have to be at all. You don't have to be involved in the campaign to play in my store at all. Just don't play in the campaign. Go do something else. But those were the rules. And I would still get people moaning. Entitlement, man. The entitlement of people. If, if you don't think people are entitled, start a YouTube channel. Soon you will find out. Just or, or yeah, start a YouTube channel or run a games workshop. You will soon find out how entitled people can be. Um, you know, just yeah, horrible. Anyway, you're not all horrible, horrible by the way. But you know, the the the, the wider community, you you do get. For every ten, well, every nine people who are amazing, there's always that one guy who makes you think, "Dude, how are you alive? If you want the world to acquiesce to you to, in such a way, if you're this entitled, how are you still around? How has the world not ground you into little pace by now?" Anyway, we ended the campaign at Christmas with a massive blowout of several big battles, deciding how the world looked at the end of campaign one. Sorry, I'm just gonna lower my microphone there if you can hear like a, a creaking noise that's what that is it was an amazing night and we had a great time with mince pies hot chocolate and all sorts I went I went home after that absolutely shattered but thinking I'd made a real difference to people's Christmases 
which meant the world to me. We even had some folks come into the store who were lonely over the holiday season. One was a widower who had lost his wife to cancer and was only in his 40s. A really lovely bloke who was so down and lost. Seeing him come alive in the campaign and actually lead the Imperial forces in holding off a massive Orc war was amazing. We had six Orc players against six, the six highest ranked Imperial players led by him on the main table, with Xenos players and Chaos players taking on the Imperium all around them. It was a glorious bloodbath that the Imperials barely survived. Fast forward to the next summer, and again, things are going pretty well. We are gearing up for the next campaign, and whilst I have a few awkward run-ins and moments at training events and other things, mostly I've kept my head down from head office after getting advice from other managers to keep quiet and not draw attention to myself. There was one trainer though, who shall remain nameless, who I think I upset pretty early on. I know what I, 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 know what I did, and it was a slip. Okay. Eventually, uh, sorry, essentially, I was talking to some other managers, and he came over to interrupt and ask me something. I told him nicely that I'd be with him in just a moment, and was just chatting to the two managers. He told me that I needed to speak to him immediately, as it was to do with training, and speaking to him that way was very unprofessional, especially in front of other managers. I was a bit taken aback and embarrassed in front of the other two guys, as I honestly think I was completely fine in my interaction. There was no malice or upset in my voice. I smiled, was attentive, and didn't just ignore him or wave him off. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, when I, when I walked away to talk to the trainer... Sorry, that's for misses again. One, one sec. Need to just close that. Uh, there was no malice or upset in my voice. I smiled, was attentive, and, di and didn't just ignore him or wave him off. Anyway, when I walked away to talk to the trainer, he said that there had been a room change and that I would be attending a training seminar in room B, not room A. The same seminar, just with different trainers. Alrighty then. That is what he interrupted me for and embarrassed me for. I must have looked a bit baffled as he said, Ugh. Is there a problem with that? Rolling his eyes as he did so. And I of course said no. I'd be at the seminar, no problem. This was not April. Okay. Alright. That's not good. I'm just gonna, before we go anywhere else, that's not good. Um, you know, I, I'm, what I mean is, I, I'm not saying you didn't act in the right way. You did. You were completely fine. You know, you, you were professional, you, you handled it well. Um, but he's sometimes in with Corporate Games Workshop what your intentions are don't matter okay what you mean doesn't matter what, you, what the truth is doesn't matter the only thing that matters is how it's interpreted by the higher ups and the people who adjudicate who in the company is going to have an easy life and who is going to have their life made a fucking misery, right? That's just how it is. And what's happened here is that you've done nothing wrong and you're very confused. Your trainer has decided you've done something wrong. He has decided you've insulted him. And that's the truth now. There is no, do you know what I mean? Th th there's no mitigating circumstances that whatever he says is happening in his own head. That's what's happening. Um, uh, your, your, your job at Games Workshop is over. Alright. This is how easy it can go. I'm telling you, this is how easy it can go. It goes from the best job you've ever had to the worst job you've ever had. This is how easy it is. That little interaction there. Right, he's talking to two managers having a nice time at a training seminar. A trainer from head office comes over to him, says, can I have a word with you for a minute, please? And, and you say, yeah, man, I just one sec. And, and he goes to turn around and say, hey, guys, I'm going to have to go talk to my trainer, blah, blah, blah. And the trainer then steps in and says, no, actually, you know, fobbing me off is not good. That, you know, that's really unprofessional. You need to come with me right now. And so you go, um, okay. You go over and he says, oh, by, um, yeah, so what I wanted to talk to you about is, 
Um, you're not in room A, you're in room B now with John, okay? Right, thanks, bye. Yeah, that's how... And, and you look a bit bemused, because it sounded really urgent. And he goes, is there a problem with that? And you go, no, no, of course not. Yeah, I'll be there, man, no problem. And then you head back over to your managers and continue conversation. That interaction... Your job's done. That's how easy it is. Those are the eggshells you're treading on. That's how easy it is. Somebody takes something the wrong way. Somebody, you know, you, know, you look at somebody for, for a second too long. You get, if you do what I did, you get somebody's name on an email wrong. You're done. You're done. It all depends how they see it. I got a guy's name on an email wrong. That's when it started. That's when the bullshit started. I got a guy's name on an email wrong. And, and the very next training session I went to, I was being spoken to like a piece of shit. Right? And they started probing and having a go and literally pulling apart, you know, every bit of self-esteem that I had. That's when it started. I can't... I'm not going to sit here and say that, that the, the email thing set it all off, but considering how petty they were from that moment on, it wouldn't surprise me. That's how, But that's how easy it is. If one person at head office takes what you say or do in the wrong way, no matter how unreasonable it is, you may as well hand in your notice. I'm telling you now. It'd be less stress to just hand in your notice and get another job. If you think, if you're working for GW as a retail manager and you think this has happened to you in the past couple of days or weeks, start looking for other work. I, I'm telling you now. Start looking for other work. Um, anyway, on the 1st of May, oh my God, they, they acted quickly. So, so this, happened, uh, this happened in April. So the April training session, okay. On the 1st of May... I was hit with a lengthy email explaining the performance of my store to me and a phone call asking me to explain the sudden jump in sales over the summer period last year. As you know, I ran an event that year, yep. I told them that I ran a narrative event in the store and that a lot of people bought into, bought into it and got models for it. They seemed satisfied with this. Then the emails began coming in about store targets, quote-unquote. Once again, these targets, just like with Dave, were well out of my reach. I felt like I was being set up to fail. It's because you were. Stores two or three times my size, with multiple staff doing sales all the time, didn't get the numbers that they were asking of me. I started to smell a rat. As time went on, the phone calls began. Some of them informing my uh, informing me that some of my uh, sorry some of them were informing me that some of my customers were complaining about me and my store saying things like i had been rude to them or that models of theirs had gone missing in my store when i asked for names these were refused to me so i didn't even have the chance to set anything right well to be fair they're not under any obligation to tell you the names unless the person has said that they're allowed to you know what I mean? Then, then, you know. Before you think ill of me, not one person at my store ever had a problem with me, and not one theft was ever reported to me at all. Everybody was all smiles and having fun in the store at all times. I met some genuine friends there that I still speak to even now. There were no issues. So unless I was dealing with a store of paranoid schizophrenics, I can only assume that a lot of these incidents were completely fabricated to apply pressure to me to leave my job. When I received a phone call from another manager, a known crony of HQ, who informed me that somebody had come into his store to complain about me, I just put the phone down. I stopped the busy veterans evening that was going on at that time in my store, and every regular was there, the place was packed. I stood on the bottom rung of a stool, and told them all that had been happening. They looked shocked and a little angry, but not at me. I told them that I valued them 
and that all they had and that they should all feel free to come to me about any concerns about the store at all. I passed out my phone number to them and told them to text me or call me in confidence if they had any issues. This was my work cell phone. Or to stay behind after closing today and we can air anything out that they had issues over. A few customers took that moment to say that, that they only had praise for the way I was running the store and here it goes. Fucking light applause. Yeah. A literal and then everybody clapped moment. Cringe and a bit awkward, but it still made my night. This made me realize something really sinister was going on and that I had to get out of there. Not one person texted me or stayed to bring up an issue. All the, man all the messages I got were of complete support and even a few offers of literal employment by one or two of the guys who ran retail businesses and hobby shops in the local area. One such offer was one I took them up on. For more pay than at, than at Games Workshop, go figure, and I handed in my notice to GW. When my notice was given, guess who came to the store to handle the changeover? That same trainer who had been offended by me at training all those months ago, smiling like a Cheshire cat and glib as you like. During the morning of my last day at Games Workshop, he was barbing me and probing me all day, with critiquing the look of my store and telling me outright that I'd run the store into the ground, quote unquote, by doing campaigns and things. The store was there for recruitment, not just to make sales. That's rich, that's rich considering they gave you all those targets, by the way. Do you know what I mean? They give you all those targets to hit financially and say, oh, the store isn't about sales. No, no, no. No, no. The store's about recruitment. Right? But, yeah, if you don't do any sales, though, we will fire you. I'm saying, you know. They just wanted you gone, dude. They're they trying to find any reason. They were trying to find any reason to get you gone. He told me I was catering just for the gamers and the veterans of the store rather than growing the store. After an hour or two of this, I threw him the keys, told him I was going home, that I was done, and walked out of the store. I took my Games Workshop jumper off in front of the store, I had a shirt on underneath, and put it in my bag. I was actually ashamed to be wearing it. I walked to the train station without looking back. They never contacted me again. They just paid me up and forgot I was ever there. Well, Jesus. I worked for the other hobby store for a few years, and now I actually run a model painting studio, which is going really well. I love the hobby, love that I created a career out of it. I just wish I could have been inside the castle pissing out, than outside the castle pissing in, I suppose. Thanks for reading my tale, Deck. No problem, man. And that is, uh... Yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame. But how many stories have we had like, sent in about shit like this? About Games Workshop losing good people. Literally good people. Because they, they just they just don't want to keep them. You know, they, they take some sort of slight. Or they don't quite fit in with the cronyism that's there. The cliques that are there. There are tons of cliques that are there, man. Tons. And if you don't fit in, this is retail, by the way, there are tons of cliques. And if you don't fit in, you're fucked. Absolutely fucked. And by don't fit in, I don't mean you're weird. And I don't mean that you're rude. I mean the amount of normal guys. The amount of normal, everyday, average dudes who had, you know, girlfriends and, you know, went out with their friends for, for drinks and all that kind of thing. The amount of those guys who would just run out of town the, the mind boggles it does boggle um, if you want to know why the retail business is, is shrinking at Games Workshop and the online business is booming here you go here you go Games Workshop don't really rely on their retail stores they don't they make most of their business elsewhere they don't really rely on retail stores at all it's not a big thing to them but case in point, there's a very good reason why most Games Workshop guys back in the day, in the 90s and early noughties, those are the guys who have glowing 
stories about the golden age of Games Workshop, or at least working for them. Because back then, retail was most of the business. But the more the business has gone away from retail, the more of these shitty practices have found their way in. Because they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit about the stores. They don't. Okay? You're, you're the bottom... If you're in retail at Games Workshop, you're the bottom rung. You are the bottom feeders of Games Workshop. You are the guys... You are the salesmen. You're the bottom feeders. They don't need you. And they will, they will let you know. If you're running a store at Games Workshop, they don't need you. Most Games Workshop stores run a loss. Considering how much rent you have to pay in some of these shopping centres, the only Games Workshop stores I'll tell you now that run a big profit are the ones in big cities. There are about seven or eight of them in the UK that run a profit. The rest of them, subsidised by the rest of the company. They're there to keep face. They are there to keep face. To keep the Games Workshop brand in, in the zeitgeist, in the public eye. And to recruit customers. That's what they're there for. But they don't give a shit about the people working there. That's why you're paid so little. Right? Don't get me wrong. GW pay terribly across the board. The top level guys at GW are earning about 35 grand a year. Yeah. Feel free to laugh. Because those are the guys who are mistreating the guys who are on the bottom rung. Right? So feel free to laugh at that. No problem. Every you are you are paid buttons for the job that you do. And if you upset the wrong person, doesn't matter how you do it, even if it's something completely bonkers and doesn't actually mean you know, like like even if it's something that they've read into a situation or something that they've even made up completely, it doesn't matter. Once your card is marked, you are done. Leave. Don't waste your own time. Don't get sleepless nights. As soon as you feel somebody from head office has got their knickers in a twist over something you've done, whether it's get an email name wrong, whether it's, you know, they've, they've taken something you've said out of context, or they've taken something you've said and read way too much into it, or whether somebody just doesn't like you, whether you just haven't gelled with somebody who's quite high up at head office. It, no matter if, it, if it's a trainer, if it's somebody who's been there for a long time, just leave. Just leave. Find another job. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. Alright? The amount of these stories that I've read now over the years. This must be the eighth or ninth of these stories that's just come to me. And it's starting to, to really get up my nose. Because mine was quite... My story... I didn't work for Games Workshop for very long. You know what I mean? My story was kind of tame compared to a lot of the ones that I get sent in. Right? It's ridiculous. They find good people and then chase them off. Just... Just irks me. Just irks me. Anyway. I love you all a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Tomorrow, we're going to be discussing more things with Games Workshop managers and hobby store managers. Mainly, what's the worst thing that has happened in your store? Part 2. And tomorrow, we've some, we have some absolute fucking doozies, dude. You're going to love it. See you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye now. I forgot to say, love you a long time. So there you go. There'll be a few of you who are panicking there. He didn't say it. Yeah, I said it. There you go. Love you. Bye.